Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition, breaking news out of New Jersey. And it's quite a shocker. Marty Tassetta, the Lucchese crime family capo, uh, boss of the Jersey, or one-time boss of the Jersey crew, looked like he was headed towards, at the very least, a new trial, if not um, tasting freedom uh, this summer. And it all fell apart this week. Uh, su uh, Superior Court Judge Dina Fakari um, in New Jersey has denied what looked to be a surefire appeal based on, uh, on, on acknowledged and established prosecutorial misconduct um, from Tosetta's conviction 30 years ago had been established in, in a series of evidentiary hearings. It looked like at the very least he was going to get a new trial. And if the new trial was granted, his counsel would have made a, uh, made a motion for bond, and he most likely would have gotten bond, would have walked out on Friday if this had gone the other direction. Instead, um, the dream has died. It died on the vine. And Vakari admits in her decision that there was dirty um, intentions on the part of prosecutors, that there was, again, established prosecutorial misconduct in terms of uh, burying a, a document in discovery, not producing it, and then when it was produced, allegedly doctoring it in relation to Marty's alibi at the time of a uh, summer 1984 murder of a Lucchese soldier named, uh, nicknamed Jimmy Sinatra. And uh, Sinatra was killed in Tom's River. And at the time, according to this document that was recently unearthed, Marty was at a dentist appointment several miles away. Um, and that this appointment book from his dentist 40 years ago, because this happened in 84, um, wasn't produced in discovery. And then when they got their hands on it, it looked like it had been manipulated. Uh, and then we also have discrepancies that were pointed out in the appeal between 302 documents that were drafted uh, when Crazy Phil Leonetti, the Philadelphia underboss, flipped, and when Little, Dal Little Al Diarco, the Lucchese acting boss, flipped uh, in 89 and 91, respectively. Their 302s didn't match up with their testimony in 93. So it looked like this thing was a, almost a slam dunk. But Vakari came out in her decision, said that, Although she sees that there was chicanery, there was, um, you know, ill intent, bad faith on the part of prosecutors, um, that it wasn't enough impact wise to affect the conviction or the, the case at, at, on its face right now. And that for people that understand legalese, I'll make it as easy as I can to digest, uh, prosecutorial misconduct in terms of motions in cases. Uh, the, the landmark ruling was called the, the, the Brady case. So it's the Brady rule. You got to meet three benchmarks uh, to qualify for an, uh, an overturn on the Brady rule. And Vakari said that uh, Tessetta only met one of those benchmark thresholds. So the good news for Marty Tassetti, 73 years old, he's got an out date, I think, in the next two years. So he'll be out by the time he's 75, 76. Went in in 93, um, came out for a couple years in the 2000s on an appeal, but then got busted again in another racketeering case in state court, which uh, reinstated the initial conviction. And, you know, from the Tassetti's point of view, this is all, uh, you know, an axe to grind from the government because of this historic case that, that happened in the 80s in New Jersey called Operation Jersey Boys. It ended up being the longest criminal trial in American history. If people have ever seen the movie Find Me Guilty with Vin Diesel, uh, that movie is all about that trial. And uh, Marty and, his, and, and a lot of people in his camp were acquitted. In that Fed case, they put a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of energy. There was a lot of embarrassment on, on the, uh, a lot of egg on the face of the Feds. And the belief by the Tessetta camp 
is that the state in the 93 case basically came to the terms that the ends justify or the the the, end, the means justify the end the end justify the means sorry the end justifies the means um and that he got away with murder allegedly um even though he was acquitted of the Sinatra murder in the first racketeering case he was convicted in the state racketeering case with that same murder that he'd been acquitted of slid in as a predicate act. So, um, you know, from a strictly objective legal analysis, this is surprising that everybody that I'd spoken to in the legal community um, thought that Marty Tassetta was going to get a new trial and uh, would be be free uh, until that new trial. Maybe that the prosecutors wouldn't even have decided to bring that new trial and just let him go. Either way, I get he's coming out in two years, but this was a surprising um, decision, and I wanted to bring it to you. Shout out to Dave Schratweiser, who, who is always on top of everything going on in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. He broke this news um, on Friday morning. So uh, tough break for the Tassettas, but uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing Marty sooner than later. Um, like I said, he, he'll, he'll be coming out in the next couple of years either way. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. Please like, share, subscribe. Check the Patreon. We got new stuff going on there. It's not going to change what we're doing on YouTube, but just a little bit, of, a little different, a little more analytical, a little more deep dives into kind of nooks and crannies and nerdy stuff. Um, but you're still going to get all the breaking news here on, on YouTube and on Gangster Report. So Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, I'm out.